Please stand for the Bible. And welcome to our service this morning, especially to anyone who's visiting us or who's here for the first time, and to those watching online. Uh, please join with members of the congregation for refreshments and lunch, served in Upper Hall after the service. If you have trouble climbing the stairs, please feel free to use the elevator which is up there to the rear of the sanctuary to my right hand side. And visitors, please feel free to take a copy of our church magazine as you leave. Please remember the box for donations of food to the Northeast Food Bank, which is in the foyer at the front door as you enter. The Food Bank is also looking for donations of bags for life, reusable bags, bags for life. And the Honesty Cafe is open as usual this uh, Thursday from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Everyone will be made welcome. Now, remember, we want your top five hymns, so we can have a top of the pops. And we want them in by next Sunday, that's the latest date, next Sunday, the 14th of April. And the ballot box with slips is there, out there in the foyer as you leave. So please remember to take a slip of paper and write down your top five hymns. And then we'll have a service with the top five hymns. Uh, this week we welcome to the organ Robert Muth, who's, who's been here before and is covering for Alan while Alan is on holiday this week. Let's give him a hand. Now let us pray together. Loving God, cast away all doubt and fear from us, that we may boldly proclaim that Christ is risen for his sake and your glory. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we worship God in the words of the hymn 194, this is the day.
Let us open our hearts to God in prayer. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we worship you because in the world of turmoil and change, you are always the same, forever loving, forgiving, and kind, always embracing and restoring us to your presence. Loving God, you are always with us, regardless of circumstances, always offering the hand of peace. When we look to you, we find calm and certainty. Like Jesus said, peace be with you to those first disciples when they were in fear for their lives. You say to us, peace be with you. You are with us in the busy street, in the quiet of night, in the hustle and bustle of a busy bus or train. You are with us in the traffic jam or in the chattering of a busy restaurant or cafe. When we are alone, you are with us, and we realize that we are never alone. You are in our tears, in our laughter, in our anguish, in our pain. You are always with us. For present God, forgive us for when we doubt that you are with us. Because even when we doubt, you are here. You are there, you are everywhere. Admit that we have sinned in word, thought, and deed. The week that has passed. And in the name of the risen Lord Jesus Christ, we ask forgiveness. Look not on us, but on us as found in Christ. In the name of the risen Lord Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. We are restored. Humbly ask that you bless our worship this day with your peaceful presence and breathe upon us the presence and power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us all to pray in these words, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, reading from verse 32 through to verse 35. Now, the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many owned lands or houses, sold them, and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. No, you didn't. You didn't. Didn't bring we do for with you, Jean. Eh, Liz, while you were there. Yeah. yeah. Now, I had that reading there because it's an interesting one. It's all about the togetherness of the first believers and how they all gathered together. 
and they had everything in common. They sold all their property, they sold everything they had, and shared it for the common good. And that's a reminder to us that all that we have is given to us from God. Not simply for our own use, it's some of it has to be given to God for his glory, for his worship, for his praise, and for the proclamation of the gospel. And they all cared for each other, looked after each other, they lived as a community. And those days, the time when Jesus walked the earth with us, uh, there was lots of religious communities. For instance, the Dead Sea Scrolls came from the community of the Essenes. And they lived as little communities with their different beliefs. beliefs. And so were the Christians, who were known as the people of the way, because Jesus, they believed, was the way, the truth, and the life. And here they all are. And they brought these things to the apostles who were in charge of them and proclaimed the gospel. And they appointed amongst them people whom we now call deacons, and that's where they come from, diaconists. Deacon servants, they distributed the food while the apostles taught and preached the gospel. And it made me think about community, 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 and how community is weakening. The idea and sense of community seems to have got a lot weaker in these modern days when it is tends to be me, 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 no, eh? not me, 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 that's my title, there it is, but it tends to be me, 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 me. you see adverts saying you deserve it, you deserve it, who says, you know, who says you do, me, 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 heard the story about someone called me, Looked in the mirror, oh, there's me. <laughs> oh, it's for me. <laughs> Let's do it for me. My name's me. Me, me, me. And then there was somebody called you. No, you do it. You. You do it. You, you. You do it. And me said you. And you said me. <laughs> Then, 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 us, then, me, you, them. It doesn't seem like community that, does it? Does it seem a bit? Yeah, it's big them, them, then. It's them. Us, them and us. <laughs> Me, you, them, and us. <laughs> yeah, us, and them. It's us. When it's something good, it's us. When it's something bad, it's them. True, isn't it? But the church should have been like that. So I found, uh, when I was looking at this and thinking about it, I found this year when I was looking for pictures for everyone. And it's everyone, is it not? Everyone. It's everyone. It's everyone's problem. And there's a problem. When the Bible says when one weeps, we all weep. When one rejoices, we all rejoice. When one's successful, we all hey. Instead of going, <laughs> Let's, everyone belongs, let's have that.
life inside. Everyone is different in so many ways. Wouldn't it be boring if we were all the same? Celebrate your culture, your family history. And when we're all together, celebrate diversity. Everyone belongs, don't you agree? And that's what the church should be like. You know, one person said to me, I think everybody in heaven will speak English. Because they had this empire, this idea that the empire was like heaven. Like God's empire, the British empire. And it wasn't, of course. Heaven is for everyone. Heaven is for everyone. And the church is for everyone. Everyone. No matter where that person is from, or who they are, Christ came for everyone. So, we're going to sing the song, We Are One in the Spirit, from Songs of God's People 111.
The epistle lesson is taken from 1 John chapter 1, reading verses 1 through to chapter 2, verse 2. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, and what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testified to it and declared to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. We sing mission praise next, 727, we are gathering unto him. Thank you. The Gospel lesson 
for this morning is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, reading there from chapter 20, from verse 19. Jesus appears to the disciples. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Jesus and Thomas. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. The purpose of this book. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And that through believing, you may have life in his name. Amen. And thanks be to God for the reading of his holy word. And may he add his blessing to it. Now come to our intercessions. We will pray for, us, pray for ourselves, our family, our friends, and the rest of the world. And please say the responses on the screen with me after short silence. Let us pray. Faithful God, we praise you for the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. Shed his glorious light on all Christian people, that we may live as those who believe in the triumph of the cross. Almighty God, we ask you to be a real and living presence in your church throughout the world. May our congregation, through the preaching and works of love, continue to testify to our Lord's resurrection. Wherever we are lacking in faith and courage, strengthen us with your Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for peace in our troubled world. Wherever nations are at war and people are suffering, we pray for true reconciliation. Protect all Christian people in the nations of the world and help them to influence their country for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for all families whose homes are disrupted by anger and bitterness, 
and where relationships are breaking up. We thank you for the gift of your Son, our Saviour, who walks with us on our life's journey. And as he gladdened the hearts of his friends when they saw him raised from the dead, may he travel alongside all who are struggling with their family life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, comfort the sick and suffering with your living presence. Heal and strengthen weak bodies. Calm confused minds and reassure the lonely with your company. We raise before you those we know with particular needs whom we have been asked to pray for and name them now in a few moments' silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we remember before you those who mourn the loss of a loved one. Reassure them that we are forever united with them in your undying love. Help us to always remember that death could not hold your Son, Jesus Christ, and that new life for him means new life for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, your Son, Jesus Christ, stands among us, and we have seen the marks of your saving love. Breathe on us with the power of your Holy Spirit, and send us out to share the peace of Christ with all who may cross our paths in the weeks ahead. Please say with me, Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we sing hymn 417, Now the Green Blade Rises.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord our God and our Saviour. Amen. This then is the aftermath of the Easter weekend. A great big gap has been left in the lives of the disciples. Their raison d'etre for the past three years appears to be no more. Their whole reason to exist has been taken from them. And now they have to adjust, fill the gap. Many people who have lost a loved one can identify with this. Especially if much of their life, part of their life has been filled with caring for and looking after their loved one. A gap is left. What to do now? The disciples were shut in a room. Not only shut in by a door, but also by fear. Fear, that terrible force. Fear. Fear for their lives. Many people shut themselves in and they let fear be their guide. Fear is a specter through which they view life. The disciples are a bit lost without their chief guide, without the light in their lives, Jesus. Jesus had been their light. He had been their teacher. It wasn't like with a football team who can get an assistant to fill in until they have appointed a new teacher or a new Messiah. It was like they were completely lost. Moses had appointed Joshua to take over from him. Elijah had appointed Elisha to replace him. Who now would take up the reins? Who were they to look to now? But should fear have been their guiding principle? Apostle Paul says that we're not bound by a spirit of fear hope and of love and of power. You can understand why they were frightened. They had been following someone dubbed as a troublemaker. Someone who had in the end been humiliated and crucified with a couple of lowly criminals. But if they were recognized as followers of this person, who seemed no, no more than a loser, disappointment, what would happen to them? The crisis, it would seem, caused them to lose their faith. The crisis had caused them to forget the teaching of Jesus. The teaching that he would suffer at the hands of the authorities. The teaching that he was not the type of Messiah who would win the hearts of people for God by force. He taught that he must suffer that he would die, and that he would rise again from the dead. Their faith was being severely tested. Yet Jesus told them that he would appear to them. The man in the empty tomb told the three women to go and tell them to wait for him, and he would be with them. However, Jesus dispels this fear and turmoil, even though the door was locked, closed, Jesus appeared to them. And his first words to them was, what are you doing, you bunch of blithering idiots? No, it wasn't that. It was, peace be with you. Or if you like, shalom, shalom. This word conveys the meaning of no ordinary peace, not just peace and quiet, but a deep peace that passes all understanding, that possesses your soul. Like, for example, the peace that he gives earlier in the story, and we often hear said at funeral services, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, give I to you. 
Let not your hearts be troubled and neither be afraid. It reminds me of the Irish blessing. Deep peace of the running wave to you. Deep peace of the quiet earth to you. Deep peace of the glowing air to you. Deep peace of the shining stars to you. Deep peace of the gentle night to you. Moon and stars pour their healing light on you. Jesus calms the disciples with his peace as only his presence can. He shows them his wounds, those wounds that can only be his, those wounds that convey the absoluteness of his commitment and love for his disciples. Only the love of Jesus can bear such wounds. I remember a Pentecostal pastor giving me a Bible and he had inscribed in the inside of the cover, Search the mystery of his wounds. If you like, search the mystery of his love. It is a mystery that he bore the pain of such wounds out of love for me, for you, for everyone. He bore not just for us, but even for those who stood and mocked him. He bore them for those who condemned him. Jesus is indeed the altogether lovely one. So having assured them of his living, loving presence, Jesus then blesses them again, and with his peace he leaves them with peace, shalom. And he gave them the Holy Spirit, whom he had taught would be their guide when he left. He would be their friend. He would be their comforter, their teacher, the Spirit, who would give them the words to speak. And help them understand the will of God. See, they were to be the leaders. They were to be the Elishas. They were to be the Joshuas. They were to be the teachers. Together, they would reveal to the world the love and life of God for them. They would emerge as the leading lights. Jesus had chosen them to be the torchbearers. Their apprenticeship was over. They were no longer just assistants. Now they had to step up. And he gave them the spirit to empower them. They have passed on that charge to every believer who followed after them. And Jesus gives us the same spirit to enable, to equip and help us. And we often say there's a one, there's a one. And indeed there was amongst those first disciples, doubting Thomas. The words of his friends was not enough. You see, the story of the disciples is a very human one when you think about it. Judas the betrayer, pretending to be a good disciple and friend, but betrayed Jesus to death. Peter, who always jumped the gun, and with good intentions, but was usually wrong and denied all knowledge of our association with Jesus when the chips were down. The sons of thunder arguing about who would sit in the most important seats. Here we have the doubter, the question, the hard to convince. Thomas, this time he was the one. I'll no believe it until I see it. Did Jesus reject him? No. Does Jesus reject the doubters? No. Jesus appears despite, he disappears again despite the shut locked doors and appears to It's him his peace, shalom. He's not angry with Thomas, but rather reveals himself to him. Thomas kneels in worship, my Lord and my God, Thomas says. Here is a lesson to us. Don't be angry at the doubter. Be patient. Share your peace with them. And if you are a doubter, don't fear Jesus. Because Jesus does not reject you. We learn that let faith not fear be our guide. Don't lock up faith. 
a time of crisis, turn to Jesus Christ. We, like Jesus, we have to show kindness, show love, reveal Jesus to the doubters. He revealed his wounds of love and compassion. And we, by our lives, must reveal the love and compassion of Jesus to the doubter. The way you live by the kindness and compassion of Christ in your life, reveal, like Jesus did, the wounds. Jesus died for the doubter too. So in a time of crisis, turn to Jesus in prayer, seek out his voice, receive his words that are peace. Let faith not fear be your guide. Don't lock up faith. Besides, you can't you hide from Jesus. Not behind a locked door. Not behind the door of fear. Even fear cannot keep Jesus out. Peace of the running wave to you. Deep peace of the quiet earth to you. Deep peace of the glowing air to you. Deep peace of the shining stars to you. Deep peace of the gentle night to you. Moon and stars pour their healing light in you. The deep peace of Jesus Christ be with you. The peace that passes all understanding. If you want to find peace, find Jesus. Hello. Now we sing the hymn from the hymn book 416. Christ is alive, let Christians sing. Let us give thanks to God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and ever-loving God, 
We give thanks for the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead, and for the assurance that you give us of life forevermore with him. With all your people in heaven and on earth, with the angels and the archangels, we praise, Lord, and glorify your holy name, Almighty God, in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. From what we have received, these offerings we give and dedicate to the glory of your name through the preaching of the gospel and the singing of your praises through Christ our Lord. Amen. We worship God now in the words of the hymn 419. Thine be the glory, risen conquering Son, endless is the victory, thou O death hast won. Go forth from here with your hearts filled with the peace of Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love near and far, on earth and in heaven, this day and forevermore.